heaven. Dear Lord God, it's once again that we humbly come before your throne of grace to give you thanks. We thank you, dear Lord God, for all of your many blessings you bestowed upon the citizens of Dillon. Dear Lord God, we ask that you continuously bless our mayor, city council, city manager, department heads on, on tonight, Lord God, that we gather together to make the decisions for the betterment of all the citizens of Dillon. And everything we do, we pray we be careful to give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. But it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 here this evening, Betsy, those of you two over there. Um, I have a motion to approve the agenda. I'd like to, if, before that, if we can add <clears throat> under new business, uh, possible purchasing of the fleet's vehicles. To make a motion to accept the agenda as uh, with the addition. Okay. Uh, motion to accept. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Uh, motion to approve the minutes from the December 10th meeting right, session. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, I called Glenn last week, and um, I found out quite a few people were commenting on it, but he didn't comment on this. I just noticed it. My wife commented on this coming in the back through town one time. The lamps on Main Street, somebody must have really worked on them. We turned in what? Tina, 20 or so last week? Yeah. Y'all got about all of them. I think I saw one. There's probably half of them that have been done that's been turned in. Looks more than that. It well, looks, I, that included MacArthur Avenue, Railroad Avenue, those also of that tour. Okay. All right. Uh, well, what I'm talking about, the lamps, the, the old main, we were going down a street coming back from Florence, and literally, probably more than half were out. And uh, I called Glenn, I just said, just get somebody on it. I didn't know if the reefs around it were causing the lamps to stay off, you know, because it was throwing a light out there, thinking it was daytime or whatever. But riding through tonight, I noticed most of all the lamps are on. And uh, I know the people that have called me about it will appreciate that. Um, <coughs> I made a post on um, on Facebook on this because I wanted to introduce this guy. I know we hired him last month. His name is Danny Hayes, or Daniel Hayes. is the new animal control officer. Um, I did that. Glenn, y'all on your committee evidently hit, a, like I said, a, a home run on that, I think. Um, well, I've gotten 300 comments or congratulations responses to that young man. And most of them are all of them. I don't have one negative one on him that he is going to be the right person for the job. So the community as a whole really thinks high of that fella. So um, I wish him the best. I, you know, he came to see me one day with Benny. Benny brought him in. And, um, you know, I told Danny, you know, we, we expected to, to help uh, monitor, you know, catch problem animals, um, just keep the ear out, but on the flip side of it, he's also a very compassionate person to animals. Uh, he owns a number of them himself. I think he said he owns dogs, cats, geese, goats, he has them. Um, I think he's going to be almost, I don't want to put too high of a bar for him, but he's almost the perfect person I, was, I had in mind. When we went out looking for one. Because uh, let me tell you, I don't know if y'all get it, but I get more calls on that, and even had two today on issues with pets, animals, and stuff like that. 90% of them is not a problem animal they're calling on. 90% of them is, can y'all please do something about one being chained up with, you know, on a tree? We're out in the you know, uh, environment with no cover and stuff like that. And of those, 90% of them are out in the county, which he can't do a thing about. Uh, <coughs> but I'm glad to have him. I think he's going to do, do very well. And his, he knows what the expectations are going in uh, of what we expect. And he'll take a lot off of y'all. Uh, and at mine, remaining time too, I hope. But um, I 
that's a big deal. That's a big deal for your community on that. Bad news in that area is bad news as far as industry and stuff. Something, you know, bad situation could cause a, a company not to come in the uh, community to think any more of, uh, of how you treat your animals or your pets that way. Um, I was asked about the hotel. So I haven't heard on that in months. Um, I talked to the buy the sell last week. Um, Mr. Jackson, uh, he commented to me that they're doing some additional follow-up on the due diligence of that hotel, but they haven't met in a month. Um, but they are still active in it. He said, being the seller, that if that project doesn't go through with that buyer, and this is his words, uh, he's going to step in and follow through with it. Take it for what it's worth. Just an update. Um, I mean, I got another call today, and I think I know the answer on that. Maybe y'all do too. If you, the person has a pretty bad situation at their house, somebody's living in a dwelling with no water, no electricity, nothing. I emailed her back and said, Does he own the dwelling? She goes, Yeah. The police is out there all the time with the man and wife coming in. Say it's just a bad situation, hollering, all kind of stuff. I'm not going, certainly not going to name it. But you can live in a, a dwelling in the city without water and sewer. I mean, it's, it's their building. They can certainly stay in. As long as it's not being condemned. No nuisance. Yes. I'll ask for a Give give us an address. After I'll, I'll look at it. the lady that called it up to me with never called me about talking in her life. So I know she's disappointed with being right beside her. But I'll do that. Um, the wellness center. Um, I don't know who thought of this, maybe Bridget, but I just want to give you feedback. There's a new game y'all have. I'm not really accustomed to it or know much about it called Pickle, Pickleball. Pickleball. Yeah. Well, that's a big deal up there in the network. Well, it's getting to be. Getting there. I mean, it's something that a lot of seniors play, active seniors. Yeah. Um, we don't have a dedicated pickle ball court. He said you use a half the basketball. We use half the basketball court um, in the mornings, and it's a it's a informal group of people who come and play. Well, he liked it. He's not a senior, but he was really high on that. And think whoever thought of that and added it to the. They've been doing it now probably about two years, to be honest with you. Um, speaking of parks, um, also called Lynn on the lights at the park. Did y'all check that? that yeah, they were turning also. Okay. Um, behind issues with cats and dogs and horses and that stuff, a lot of my, my calls are, are about things to do in the community in the park. You know, we hear people come in and they'll say we haven't updated our parks, or maybe we haven't updated them like we should. Uh, you know, I had somebody mention, oh, maybe we've done nothing in the park in 10 years. I reminded them we spent $100,000 at the new park at the Wellness Center. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. It's been a little longer than that. And all, camp, all the neighborhoods. <laughs> I think, personally, we can get so much or a big bang for the buck by modernizing Harmon Park. Um, you know, it's, it's such a good looking park and since we updated it with the lights and everything 15 years ago. Uh, I mean, that's close to when I came in, we added those landscaping lights out there. Um, I was going through Florence a couple months ago and I saw their park and I've had some, some people in the, you know, I've been, I brought this to you before. Uh, they said, why don't you we do a horseshoe turn or something like that? But that park there had horseshoe pits. It would be a great thing to add there without really a huge expense for an activity at your park. And they've got enough room to do it. Um, the other thing is, you know, we got an old tennis court there that's just 
fenced around partially with concrete. Why not use some of the two cent money to take that concrete out, buy a fence, and put a volleyball court there and load it up with sand? I mean, just something else outside that you don't have to maintain much and just having some other things to do because a lot of that space at that park is just not utilized at all. Uh, what do y'all think? I mean, that's yes, think something yeah. you can do without a ton of money uh, adding to an uh, existing piece of property. I'm just thinking how, how they used to treat the basketball balls when they tear the walls You know, if you had a way that, I don't know how people would have to say that they would want to play volleyball, so we want, you know, they would call the city and they could put it up and take it down and have it through. I mean, that's a lot of work. That could be, yeah. But, um, <clears throat> um, I, I think if you leave that net out there all the time, it's going to mess it up. It would, they maybe, or you could but try. I, I, I think, think it's a great idea. Um, I mean, I think, you know, you might, you might get a lot of play out there. You'd be surprised how many of these kids. I, I see a lot of nets go up on the grass for badminton and volleyball out there in the summer and spring when I go by. I see you know, it'd be nice to have a, uh, to move that concrete and just put a sand court. That'd be such an enhancement. That's just two ideas for the park. Um, the other one that uh, was, and I don't know how much you could do about it, was a little something for a, um, uh, I want to say a disabled child. But, um, well, we did, well, we talked about that a year or so ago. We put in a handicapped swing and Within a month's time, we had headaches there, if I remember correctly. In fact, we ended up taking that out to convert again. We've had it in there two or three times. People misuse it and, and that type of thing. See, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, the ideal thing would be, and you see this a lot, is, is a all-inclusive playground. And by saying that, just trying to use the correct terminology that includes all children of their abilities. All right. We got that could be the place to do it. Yeah. I think you want to do it, Harmon, and other parks, a little bit every couple of years. Uh, instead of trying to ram stuff down and spend a lot of money spend every five years. Because we do get, you know, we're online for the park, and you spend it on great products. Harmon is the most used park, I think, by far. <clears throat> and the most visible park. And it does a nice park in the middle of an old community like that, with wrapped around with old oak trees. And you know, you got the church and the garden club taking care of the corners. Uh, a lot of the walkers, that needs to be absolutely a priority for the city. Because it's in the central location of the town. Sign. What about our sign? You need, you need to still look at that. Yes, sir. <clears throat> that one on, on uh, Main Street, we've yet to replace the one that was taken out back in the summer at the Wilma Center when a car ran off the road and took it out. So we're looking to do both of those digital signs. And lastly, I know you're going to speak about, I'm not going to bring much on, uh, on the demolition of Hampton Street other than a lot of people are going to be glad to see that. Um, but people will commonly say, boy, the city sure has laid down on Main Street. Look at Main Street when I come back home and you know, the buildings that are empty and all this stuff. I like to remind people it's not the city's responsibility to keep up somebody's private property. You know, the par property owner is let the building deteriorate. Then the city has the issue where it's gotten so bad where they don't fix it, it gets condemned, and then it comes right back on us just like what we're going to be spending this money on on Hampton. Um, that's why we enforce it. And we got to, you know, really enforce it now. Um, I know you've had some that's got some facade grants for February, and they're moving. And that's, that's good. I hope they all do. Um, but, but we'll see. Uh, 
you know, Florence, I was listening to every morning on, uh, before I come to, to work on TV 13 around 6.30, the new local news comes on, and they're talking about Florence and the investment made in the city of Florence went from three restaurants to 13 restaurants. And um, the, uh, the new theater there, and what Francis Marion and the Bruce Lee Foundation is doing. But what staggered me the other day, Florence, they have spent $265 million in downtown Florence over the last, since they've done this revitalization, which just floored me how much money that they uh, put in. In fact, I thought I heard it wrong. 265 million. You, you talking about private money or public money? Total. Total. Okay. That's still a lot of money. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Um, um, so you know, I heard that and I, I knew I, that hurt my ears up and I said, oh, you couldn't have heard that right. So I went back and I read some old articles and they had one from 2015 and in 2015 they had spent 170 million. So I heard it right two or three years later, 265 million dollars. Which triggered me to think, like, what in the world would a million dollars do to downtown Bill? Uh, or a couple. And, uh, Still will say that spark's going to come. You'll still have it called. So, uh, there's a lot of things going on in this county that eventually the, the main street's going to have to pick up and catch up, and, and it will. But as far as your, your council, I think we're doing as about as all all we can do when you match and give money up to, to go in and enhance uh, the front of people's buildings, inside of people's buildings. I got a call from a fellow, the other, again, it's been a busy week. Uh, last week, another town's called asking, how are we doing these grants? And uh, I want to know where the money's coming from. I said, the money's coming from what we budget. Uh, we're, we're making an investment in. And, uh, it's going to take a little time, but you're going to start seeing the, um, we knew it weren't quick fix, but you're going to start seeing some improvements on the, the front of the buildings and, and so forth, and hopefully to sell some of Spend the money on hotel. So I had a fellow in my office today inquiring about buying some or interested in buying some. So, so activity will pick up, so I hope that the activities are good. And I will reserve the rest of my time. I'm going to follow up with talking about the street lights earlier. <coughs> My office has been working hard here the last month and a half in updating Facebook and other social media avenues that we use. And on our face on our website page, Tina has included now a link to Duke Energy. So if people see a street light, if you go to, to our website and you go to Duke Energy's link and it'll walk you through if you have a street light in front of your house. All you have to do is just look at the pole, get the pole number off, and we show a, a clip of what the pole number looks like. Folks can actually do this themselves. A little metal clip. A little metal clip. And you can go online and, and, and put that information in with Duke Energy. And that helps. It usually takes anywhere from three to five days once they get the work order to, to do it, to change them out or to fix them, whatever the case may be. Again, if... Uh so I want to uh, not put on one pole somewhere near the house that do the same thing? No, that would have to come, they have to come through us and we'd have to release <coughs> that. Because then we have to sign a contract with Duke to add that to our account. Now, speaking of that, back in August, I believe it was, we had some folks out in Pine Street area you're talking about some lighting on Carmichael Boulevard. We're still waiting on those. Those have been requested and they were scheduled to start and work on that in September, but the hurricane came and hadn't seen them. So I called them back in December. They've got it on their schedule to do. But there was two or three pole and lights that we were going to put down Carmichael Boulevard since there were none there. So those are in the works. So that should be taken care of soon. 
Also, following up on the animal control that we're in, starting to do, I think we had one last week that was put on our Facebook page. <clears throat> if we pick up a stray animal, um, we're taking a picture of that stray animal, turning it over to Tina, she'll put it on Facebook, so people can say that, you know, where we pick this animal up, what it looks like, if it's theirs, you know, to contact the animal shelter. And I think the animal shelter does some of that also. But we felt like that was a good way of getting our word out to people to um, see the animals that we do pick up that possibly they know who the animals are. So that, that is something we had started here last week. And we're discussing, and I'm waiting to see what happens in Orrie County. They passed an ordinance or one or two readings, they have to have three. Back in November and December concerning tethering animals, tethering dogs to a tree. Waiting to see where that goes. Not sure if that can happen. Because uh, state law does, says it doesn't, doesn't um, what's the word I'm looking for? State law doesn't not recognize it or doesn't say you can't. So I don't know that we actually can do something of that sort. But if it passes and it doesn't look like there's going to be much drawback, maybe something we need to look into as far as, far as tethering dogs to trees or stakes. Um, now they, they had a long drawn out one where the dog can only be tethered for four or five hours during the day. I don't know if, you know, Bingo. Bingo. Who, who, who. Well, I think that the I don't know, Danny, he'll use common sense if it's like tethering a dog. You know, you know, if he sees a dog tethered in no shade, 100 degrees in the summertime, he needs to go look. Now, if you got a, a dog house beside it or a shelter where that dog can get to, and it's, I mean, that's, you just going to have to live with it. The people are, uh, Absolutely. Yeah, and we get calls about dogs being left in yards that may not be tethered, but in a backyard. And during the rainy part of the, after the hurricane, we got a lot more rain, and people would call us about a dog or dogs. <clears throat> they had nowhere to go. Well, they had a doghouse. Whether the dog goes in the doghouse or not, nothing you can do. I, mean, I have a lab that when he gets out of his kennel during the day, if it starts raining, he could, he's not going back in his kennel. He, he wants to be out in the water. So we'll try to use the best common sense that we have when it comes to those things. Kind of going to mix it up a little bit tonight. I have some of our department heads who are going to actually speak to council tonight about some different issues that they've been dealing with here in the last few weeks and months. First, we'll start with Chief David Lane. And the reason that I ask that the police vehicle purchase, possible police vehicle purchase, be put on the agenda, he's going to make a proposal and talk about the condition of his vehicles and then you know, he can ask questions, but we really won't want to vote on that until the new business, even if you don't want to vote on it, we can still have it in new business and if you say we'll deal with it another month, we'll just skip over that. So I'll turn it over to Chief Lane. I, I met with, I talked with Glenn, I've been talking to him about vehicles for a while now and we have, the last time we purchased vehicles was after Matthew, we purchased four vehicles that were flooded. We, we were able to save two of the vehicles. Uh, we carried them over to the uh, folks in Florence and they cleaned them out. And they, they still have a loader, but we're able to, to use them. But now we have, um, now that we're full, we actually do not have enough vehicles for all of our folks. We have one Black Crown Vic that uh, one of the cadets, once he graduates academy, would have to drive that. Um, it's just not not a good situation. And and the proposal that I, I submitted to Glenn was that um, current the, the four vehicles that, that I am asking for, for council to approve purchase is a 06 Crown Vic, a 07 Crown Vic, and two 2008 Crown Vics. And these these guys are they're driving them. They're, they're not really safe, and, and we need to consider putting putting these officers in, in vehicles that, that are in, in poor shape. All these vehicles have well over 100,000 miles on them. 
And there are, there are several uh, options that, that we'd like for you to consider. Uh, we, we met with Enterprise uh, Fleet Management. Uh, we, me and Clint both were pretty skeptical uh, when thinking about leasing vehicles. But what, what they're proposing to us is that you would, you would lease a vehicle and that payment uh, per year for one vehicle and we'll assume that, that the price would be $35,000. That's fully equipped. They handle um, getting all the equipment in, in the vehicles for you and you don't start paying until they deliver it. It's a five-year lease. It will cost you about $7,200 per year per vehicle. It's a five-year lease. At the end of five years, there's a $5,000 buy-down. You own all equity except for $5,000. And what, what the, the, the selling point is that we're able to buy vehicles for about seven to $10,000 cheaper than the general public. Um, because we're buying it on a state contract. And so we have more equity in these vehicles than the average person would. So we could sell these cars and they, they, what they pride themselves in is when to sell the cars. And so you can uh, make sure you, you get as much money out of the cars as you possibly can. So what they, they would propose is to sell those cars after five years. Well, if we replace four cars at $35,000 a piece, then it would, it would deplete our drug fund because I, you know, we discussed it and we, we know that uh, that's probably where the money's going to have to come from is the drug fund. But I, I would just caution you that that money is not guaranteed and it is not going to be there forever. So uh, I would like to see where, where we don't put ourselves in a situation where we have to buy four cars, we could buy two cars every year and somehow find a way to, to, to stick it in the budget so we know that, all right, we, we can buy these two cars every year. We guarantee these two cars so our fleet does not get so old. But now, what's your total number of cars? We, we currently have 20, 27 vehicles. Um, and it was a, um, that is one of the ways that we've been able to retain our employees. Well, if it is for a year, then that would be a seven-year-old vehicle by the time it was turned over. Um, and how much cheaper is it? Can we buy them than, like, you know, the lease companies? We, they would buy the same price that we, they would yeah, buy the state would. contract. Uh, okay. um, and they would just... The, I guess the, the the only the main selling point was to me was it, it would be a, a quick fix for for us immediately um, because we would have to put out about twenty eight thousand dollars a year for five years as opposed to uh, buying four cars at all all at one time. What you're saying is do that as a quick fix and then, and then budget and then four rate, cars a year? Budget two cars. Two. I, would, I would just ask for two then cars. You're, then you're looking at 14-year-old cars. Please don't need to drive 14-year-old cars. Well, I, I understand, but we... We, we are. We, I know we, we are. We are. And we, just, we, just, we, need to do, we need to do something, and I'm not asking to, to, to spend... Two hundred thousand dollars tonight. I'm just I'm asking to fix our problem immediately so we can uh, reassess it in the new budget. The only thing when I look at ever leasing a car, always the setbacks always you're limited on mileage. That's not an issue. There's there's not an issue there. Um, you, the difference in this and I and if you if if you want to table this and I'll I'll put this in your packet for or get. So you may have to put this in the pack for next next month. I'm okay with that, but I just I mean time is of essence. But it it is um, we own all the equity in the vehicles. They don't 
it's not like the, uh, the, the lease of, um, that you hear leasing a vehicle. It's, it's not that kind of lease. Um, and city manager asked the fellow, well, uh, what's the difference in us going to the bank and just borrowing the money? And, and We're paying $5,000 to have $35,000 for five years is basically what happens. No? I mean, you said we have to pay $5,000 at the end of it. To pay it. That is, no, no, no. That is, that is what, what the end dollar amount that you will owe on that vehicle at the end. It, that's not the interest that you're paying on it. No, that, no but, but what I'm saying is, is that basically they're going to um, amortize the $35,000 over five years, and at the end of the five years, you're going to have to pay $5,000 to, get to your have car. that vehicle. Right? right. So basically you're paying $5,000 for that $35,000 to for five years. And somebody do that, man. I mean, it's yes, four hundred four hundred dollars a year, so it's right five years. You said that's seven thousand dollars a year to lease it, correct? Seven thousand dollars a year. So that's thirty-five thousand plus the five would be forty thousand dollars. Yeah, but what I'm saying, sixty months and if I that you're paying. The, the interest rate is a, what? Do you remember what he said? It was about. Well, when I asked, what's the difference? Between Doing it through them or just going to the you know our local bank and borrowing money. He said interest rate. We probably get a lower interest rate if my if my memory serves me. That that is what he he was. I mean he was clear but, that you could get a better. Interest his rate. other point was on the equity was after five years if you want to turn this car in right and, and start another right. one we'll take the car that you turn in we will sell it for you. For you, and anything over five thousand dollars that the car sold for comes back to you. Am I correct? That is correct. Because they, you know, they they're selling their lease vehicles all all the time, so they they know they, they know, know how to do that. they know how to do it. So when we buy these cars, we got to quit it. Yeah, right. and they're they're putting that into they're rolling that into the lease. How much does that cost when you buy the, a car? Ten thousand. About ten thousand. And that's, we reuse that equipment. Though. We we reuse most of it. Yes. If it had been damaged in a wreck or, or flooded, that's correct. <laughs> if we wreck it, if we, you know, I don't know that we, we even talk. I, I, well, you well, still be on insurance. insurance. We, have, we still we be covered. Yeah. Yeah, we right. still have to, we have to maintain yeah. that insurance. Still have the insurance yeah. that would be just like we have today. Y'all think y'all y'all two are smart enough to know? Well, the, it gives us and. And if we can wait the next month, that'd be great where we can give them that breakout. Yeah. The idea was every year, was it every year? Yeah, every year what they presented or they proposed is we get new vehicles in the police department. Well, after about, I don't remember, seven, eight, nine years, it would it, be awful expensive. For us to be making payments, it would it would be about two hundred thousand yeah. dollars a year to have the the entire fleet with these folks, and and our our concern was that that we didn't have much control because they, I mean then you're kind of stuck with them. You're just looking at a stopgap to start this. To help I have a couple questions I might ask. Sure. Um, first of all, with the drug fund money, are we waiting on any money to come in? I think there may be one case out there. But we're, we're pretty well. We don't, we don't well, you've got a surplus in your city courts. I mean, the last two years, you, right now, you're going to have a surplus. So my thing is, why don't we use some of the money that the officers are out here doing their jobs to come back and buy two vehicles? I mean, they got well, a if you ain't even got one to drug up on and get one car out of that, you got a surplus from the city courts. <laughs> For, the last, for this year and last year, I mean, that money's available. And, you well, know. you say it's available. You say there's surplus in the court. There may have been a, you know, at the end of the year, based on our audit this past year, what did he, I can't remember the exact number, that we came revenue above expenditures in general fund. What was that number? You remember? Well, I know it's all tied in together. Yeah. Just I mean, it's just, because you know, all that goes back into right. what we call um, operation account, 
a depreciation account. Right. But my concern though form. is is you said that we don't have enough vehicles for the officers that we got now, correct? We once these two graduate the police academy and they're in a week. And when week is that two. Two. When is they've that? got ten more weeks. Ten more weeks. Okay. And we, the we have a vehicle we can put them in. Mm -hmm. I understand. But it is not. But they got a hundred thousand miles on them. Well, no, we, it, one of them is a black unmarked Crown Vic, and I really don't want to put a, a, a cadet right out of the police academy in, in an unmarked vehicle. And we also have one that's wrecked that we're, we're having to kind of piece together. Well, you know, another thing to too is that we got all our money from the from the floods and from that wrecked car that's down at the service department now from the insurance from, company from the. Hurricane, no, we're still, Janet was meeting with FEMA that they finalize that, so I mean, that could be a year out, two years What about the car that was towed on this down there now? We're working on that. That one still within How much money do you think we'll get back? Just to give me a ballpark. What's the year of that car, Dave? So 14 or 15. Sorry, that's no, 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 it's, I'm sorry, it's a 15 or 16. So that car probably costs 25 to 28,000. We might get half of that. But that just gives me yeah. an idea of yeah. sharing with them what we can possibly do. But I would really like to see us have two cars available for our two cadets. Or every how you shuffle, have two cars available for every police officer to keep going what they're doing. Taking them home and being available for them. That's like you said, one of the incentives that we've had. Well, that and, and you know, if one of them's down, then right. for some reason, mechanical problems are wrecked. You know, we always like to keep spares. Just because you never know. Can we table it? Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's what I say. I got the new business. You got and the new, how long I got to take them to get the cars ready, first of all? Yeah, I, probably, I, would, I would assume about 30 days. 30 days. So if we were to table it, yeah. I mean, it, would I want to take one boat? I mean, so. Yeah. Like I said, I've had it in the approval of the agenda just in case right. y'all wanted to make a decision that was on the agenda. But once we get to that, we can just table it. If that's what y'all seem to be fit to do. And then I do want you to see that report, just to give me an idea. If that's what you want us to do with that. That's all there, Chief? Yes, sir. We got Bert listed to speak about storm drainage and, and what he's been dealing with and what he was doing today to kind of give you an idea of some things before, but before he starts. And I told you back in October, I believe it was, might have been November, that Representative Hayes had reached out to me wanting to sit down and meet about storm drainage in the city. And he wanted to have someone with DOT involved in that meeting. That is scheduled for Monday, the 28th of January at 10 o'clock. So if any of you want to sit in on that, you're more than welcome. Is the public invited to sit in on it? No, you no, don't know no, 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 Yeah, no, this should just be. Will you be attending the talk? No. But it'll be 10 a.m. on January 20th. No, it's not open for the public. Okay. This is just to talk about what we got, what they may be able to do or may not be able to do. So at this time, I'll turn it over to Bert. Well, I'll, as all of you know, since Hurricane Matthew has been a, um, Florence has been a major issue. Um, Today, you know, we had a gentleman come into town to look in some of our problem areas, Virginia Lane, Johnson Drive, Lee Circle area, Laurel Lane, and what he, he brought a camera, and it's like a, it's on a tripod, and we were able to put it down in each catch basin manhole and view, you know, down the pipe. Uh, you know, couldn't really say exactly how far we were viewing. But from what we saw, you know, most of the pipes, we, we really didn't have a structural problem that would, you know, be a big significance, you know, to, to cause a major backup. So what we determined pretty much, you know, from looking, you know, in all the, you know, the problem areas, is the pipes were just small. You know, there's a few issues with roots growing in the pipes and things like that, but, you know, nothing that, you know, would jump out and stand out, well, this is why all the water was backing up. Biggest, you know, the biggest thing is, you know, the pipes are small, and it just takes time to drain because all of them are coming to one location. So that's, you know, that's you know, pretty much what we saw there. You know, in the meantime, you know, we've been out assessing some of the canals in the area, um, checking for debris that's falling into the canals. 
since the storm. And, you know, it's been so wet we haven't been able to get out and do much. But um, as soon as it dries up, we're going to go back in and, and check some of the canals and make sure they're free and flowing well. And, um, continuing to check catch basins. And that's a daily job, you know, with debris falling, trying to keep them clean. You know, something, you know, the homeowners, you know, they can help tremendously with that. You know, if you got a catch basin in your yard, if you can keep it free, just a little bit of leaves, you know, stop it up. But, um, you know, like I say, over in, you know, the problem areas we, we looked in, you know, we had a, the camera, it was amazing to me. You know, you put that thing in, you can look down and see if you got a problem, you need to clean this one or clean that one. You know, maybe in the future one day when we get on our feet a little bit, you know, with our stormwater fees and all that, that maybe one day we can, you know, make a purchase that with a camera like this to, to help speed up the cleaning process. You can go look in and take a quick pick. You know, this line needs to be clean. This one, you know, where you're not wasting time by just cleaning the line that's already clean. Bert, I thought we had a, a, one of those robot things. That was... It's outdated. I mean, well, we, that was through with sewer lines. It won't work in. Storm drains. Storm drains. Because storm drains is, is more pipes a lot bigger, and you know storm drains they typically have more debris in them. I mean you can go clean them and all, but you're still gonna be left with a little bit of silt, you know roots or something like that. Trips the robot. Right. But um, like I say, you know we look, you know all, you know like in Virginia Lane area, and, and especially where they were flooded real bad and the water stood for days in Johnson Drive. Pipes look, you know. They're fairly clean. I mean, there's a few up and downs here and there, but you know, nothing that really jumps out. You know, that's a. You, know, you got pipes running in people's backyards and under houses and things like that. So it's, you know, it's a. You know, it's not an easy thing to, you know, say we're going to do this or do that. Where do they all come together? Well, it just depends on what area you're draining. Well, that area. That area was Yeah. If you know where Roberts Road is. Where Tim Ammons lives, there's a, like a waste pond area that, that um, water from Virginia Lane, no, yeah, Lee Circle. Virginia, I thought Virginia went behind. Uh, Virginia Lane goes. Yeah, down. Virginia Lane goes down behind on Ann Court, right? Yeah. yeah, that's correct. But Lee Circle, Johnson Drive, and Maple Street, and all that it drains over behind Tim Ammons. Well, with that being said, though, and we got this meeting with the state, you said between. Mm -hmm. I mean, and you share that information with them. What are we trying to get accomplished with the state? What, what are they going to do? I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, the pipe and you know, the biggest what, issue that, that we think is, which we know, I mean, everybody knows, it, the size is the biggest issue. But in some cases, there's nothing you can do because we have some areas that where the storm drain goes actually <coughs> under house. And the only way you can replace that height is you either redirect it or move the height. Or supplement. Yeah. No, just supplement. Yeah. It, it's not an easy fix. I mean, or it, you know, really nothing ever is. But you know, it's you know, it's the starting point where we can meet with these guys and you know, maybe come to. You know, well, when y'all some ideas. Out, well, you know, it stood there for a long time. Y'all got guess the back of the truck blew that and flying out on the hand core. It moved much quicker. Right, you know, it's a 15 inch pipe, I think. So when you get like a 15 inch pipe and you get a hubcap in it or a basketball or something like that, I mean, you find all kinds of things in these pipes. And like I say, it's really important for the community to do their part as well as it is our part, you know, to help keep them clean that will benefit everyone. So it's, it's a challenge to keep debris out of the pipes because they're small. You get a hubcap turned in there, it'll stop the whole thing up. And it happens. So you get in there and blow it out and it'll break it up. I will say I was I was disappointed this morning when I went where they went and, and looked at it. I thought I was going to see blockages, you know, or you know something that's going to say here's what the issue was. But what? Well, give me a general idea of how did he done that? I want this lower the uh, uh, camera it down is, the it's manhole. A, it's a camera head. It's about this big. Uh -huh. It looks like a flashlight you hold on most, but it's turned upside down like this, and it's on a, a big long rod. And it, you know, and it's a, you put it, just lower it down in the hole, and the rod kind of pulls out and extends, and the head will move up and down. And you put it in the pipe, and you can see down the pipe, it's got a real bright light around it, where you can see down the pipe. And 
focus in, it'll focus in up to 300 feet. It transmits by Wi-Fi to a tablet. Yep. And you can see it on the tablet. That's correct. And we're holding and the tablet. And then adjust it how you want to you know, turn left, right, up, or down. Okay. Yeah, we're holding the tablet in our hand looking inside the pipe. Now that piece of equipment, $16,000. And, and you look at it and you go, where's $16,000 at? I mean, yeah. this is a big flashlight on, yeah. uh, on Wi-Fi. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it was yeah. really pretty cool. We were able to go look in, I don't know, 15 or 20 catch basins in maybe about two hours. It seems like you need something you need to buy. I, I think, I think so too, but I, you yeah, know, we're talking about it. I mean, and, and that's, that's today, one of the but... things for the storm water feed that, to do something yeah. like that. Um, it, it, it won't. It will help to see potential problems that they could be in there. Um, there was one that we saw today that we don't know because this one he brought us didn't have a a mechanism or a laser on it that would give us how many feet. It was looking at, or if you went to a spot and, and marked it, it wouldn't show you how many feet. But there was a section that we weren't quite sure if the pipe moved left or right, or if there was one coming in. It looked like it, but you really couldn't tell. And that's the one that was pretty much under a house, or we think that at least that portion was under the house. Then there was another section that showed a dip, and we couldn't tell why there was a dip, if the pipe was broken or you know whatever it may be. But just looking at it, the vast majority of it, you think, why do we have issues? Because it's pretty clean in those areas. But we wanted just to brief you on, on that to, to let you know along with the meeting that I've got with the state at the end of this month. The meeting was going to be where? In my office. You got pictures. Yeah. You got pictures. No, we didn't. No, because this was on his this uh, company's stuff. But we had DOT, local DOT with us, so they saw it too, to get an idea. Lastly, I have Mr. Hardy Jackson to kind of brief you on the Highway 34 water tank and where we are on it. Well, we got the tank full of chlorine and water. Waiting to get, we got to drain it, get two back tees, three or four hours apart. <coughs> Should have it online maybe at the end of this week, first of next week. It gets us through all the paint and everything. It looks good. It didn't be out. Looks good. It's working good. Yes, sir. How much is that cost? 78, 80? 89. Did you happen to get out there and watch and see how they did it? Hardy? Watch a little bit of it. It was amazing. Yeah. I took pictures of it. I mean, you would think that it would take forever. I think it took them. What, less than eight hours yep. to wow. cut, well back, and put it back into place. Wow. It was amazing. And that cost us the cost? It was an additional $263,000. Pretty good money an hour. Yeah. And 30 grand an hour. It took them longer to paint it. Yeah. Really. <laughs> Absolutely. That's all I have at this time. And our financial highlights, our general fund and our total cash accounts, we've got $1,481,374. Our revenues for 2018 fiscal year is $2,078,420. For 17 fiscal year, it was $2,351,293. That was $2 million. Yeah. Two million. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. Okay. Which is a difference of two hundred and seventy two thousand eight hundred and seventy three dollars. The backer truck proceeds of two hundred and thirty five thousand was included in that, which it's still we were a little short this year versus last year of thirty seven thousand eight hundred and seventy three dollars and a lot of that comes into the property tax, which our revenues are like thirty five percent or we should be at 50%, but that's due to property tax and business license that we get later on in the year. And then our expenditures... I don't understand. Why, why is the factor truck of 235000 figured into revenue? Well, that's a good question. That's proceeds that we got in. That's what the bank gave us yes. to pay that off. We borrowed 235000 yeah. Oh, and that was done in 2017. 17. Oh, that's correct. Yeah. 
our um, expenses year to date for this year is three million two hundred seventy four thousand four hundred fifty one dollars in 2017 last year was three million two hundred ninety seven thousand eight hundred fourteen dollars we're um, a difference of twenty three thousand three hundred sixty three dollars which we're at fifty five percent 55% of our expenses, which we should be around 50% on that. Our water and sewer, we've got a total of all our accounts is $3,473,258. Our year-to-date revenues is $2,186,681. Last year it was a million nine hundred seventy-five thousand one hundred fifty-one dollars, a difference of two hundred eleven thousand five hundred thirty, which is due to the insurance proceeds of one hundred fifty thousand, which the difference out of that would be sixty-one thousand five hundred thirty dollars. Um, we've got our revenues is at pretty much at fifty-nine point nine percent, which is above where we should be at, which is good. Our expenses are this year is a million seven hundred eight thousand three hundred seventy four dollars. Last year it was a million six hundred fifty six thousand five hundred forty, which we brought. You know, we brought our expenses are more fifty one thousand eight hundred thirty four thousand more this year. That's due to forty thousand nine hundred four is in pump repairs, lift stations, and then we had um, about seven thousand seven hundred twenty three and equipment to run water service lines with. So we have forty six percent in expenses in water. So you know we we're, we're down a little bit which is good. Our highlights for the golf course, we have seven thousand seven hundred and twenty six dollars in the account. Our revenues this year was eighty eight thousand seven hundred and eleven dollars. Last year was eighty six thousand eight hundred and eighty one, a difference of one thousand eight hundred and thirty. This year we have transferred 90000 into the golf course from 2%. Last year, um, this time was 45000 That's due to we have not received, still have not received our 50000 from the county, which I've been told we should get that in February. For 18. Mm -hmm. for, for this year. The year we are. That we're in. The year that we're in. We received it last, last yes. fiscal year. The fiscal year, yes. Um, our expenses, $184,642 this year. Last year was $181,621, which is $3,021 difference in our expenses there. Our 2% hospitality fund, it's got $838,109 in it. Our revenues year to date this year is $293,615. Dollars last year, fiscal year was two hundred seventy-six thousand eight hundred ninety-nine dollars. We're at fifty-six percent on that. Um, we did transfer this year for the for the audit six thirty eighteen one hundred seventy-two thousand eight hundred seventy-seven dollars from two percent to pay general fund back for the expenses, and then the the what the general fund pays in excess of what they bring in, what the wellness center brings in. And the year before, it was $174,176. So you got, we had a shortfall in the wellness center of $172,000. $872,000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. So. And what was it the year prior? year prior was $174,176, which was about a thousand two hundred ninety nine mm -hmm. difference. That's outside of making the payment. Right. Yeah. Right. And our payments coming up on that. It coming comes up in February. February. Yeah. So. Well, you already took it out of the. Have you already taken it out of the ledger? Mm -hmm. The payment is coming up in February. No, yeah. but I've taken the hundred seventy-two thousand out. So it's going to be less than six hundred thousand dollars in next year. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, right at six. No, it, that yeah. it, that'll show up in March. Well, I know. Yeah. yeah. You say if you took out the payment today, yes. you'll have to take it out. It takes us roughly yeah, seventy-five hundred, eighty or a hundred thousand to add to that number. It takes about four and a half months. months. See, we we'll, we'll get we'll get in probably another. Yeah, we'll get in 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 another. Yeah, we'
this, this month we'll probably get in about 40, 48,000, somewhere along in there. Yeah. And then February, the same thing. So, yeah. About, about $45,000, $50,000. Okay. That's it. So we'll have, we'll have close to a million dollars. I didn't understand what you just said. You said that we, we take it, the principal payment comes out you know, next month. It'll be in March. It'll come, it'll show it in comes March. out in February, but it shows in our report in March. But we That's should March. collect another, you know, 90, another 90000 90, Yeah, it's going to be in March. Yeah. So we should collect another 90000 So we'll almost a million. So we'll probably be back at like seven seven fifty as opposed to under six hundred. And I, I think memory serves me. I can't remember exactly. Is it two hundred thirty thousand payments about, yeah. or two hundred thirty? Yeah. I think two thirty four. Okay. You know, is it, that's about four and a half, five months mm -hmm. of collection. No, excuse me. It's two hundred thirty nine thousand four hundred seventy five dollars. Okay. I knew you would know. That. That's what it is. Can you tell me why the county hadn't given us our money? They just said they, you know, just couldn't get to us right now. They said they just couldn't. I get mean to that. Us right now. I didn't go into it with based them. I just, on, based on watching their council meetings here the last two months, they talked about being strapped for money. The reason I asked them was seven months into a physical budget, and we hadn't received our money. But, but we, we requested it in July, and usually we get it July to August, September time frame. But due to the fact, based on what they said, Overall, general their budget or their revenues in November, December, they were in tight shape. They wanted to make sure they paid some different things off that they owed. We just put on the back side of it. So. How many more years on that budget? Seven. Seven. Yeah. We borrowed it in 2005, and it was. 20 year now. 20 year now. Yep. So we got seven more papers. You know, another thing I want to ask you is I, I know this hospitality, we do one on our honor system, and I know we talked about this before. But how are the other municipalities? Same thing. Do you mean to tell me they're on the honor system? Yeah. And we looked, I don't know, two years ago um, when Benny was doing um, business license renewals, <coughs> and we'd look at certain ones to see what they showed on their gross for their renewal for business license, and it pretty much close to what they would give us during the year for their two. So we kind of audit every once in a while to see. Yeah, that's spot on. Now, if, if you know that <coughs> a national chain that may be located here is giving us numbers that, you know, that throws up a red flag, but you kind of have an idea some of those. All right, thank you. Uh, anything you want to bring our attention to? Um, new business resolution 119 honoring the Dillon High School varsity football team. We'll make a motion. I second. All in favor? Aye. Is that going to be at a, another time or what? What's that? The, this resolution. When am I going to get it? This is it. This is it? Yep. And I spoke with Coach Hayes last week and invited him. It is extraordinary. I know Friday night he said he's six state titles in the last seven. Yeah, but did he correct it? Yeah. Seven. Seven in the last 11. Yeah. Got a lot in common with the New England Patriots. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to the signage thing at the Wilson Center, mm -hmm. the person that took it out, the they don't have to, they, we got yeah. some insurance money. Yeah. Insurance money paid for that. Or they gave us insurance money for it. We got insurance. All right. Uh, business demolition of property at 112 East Hampton Street. All right. In your packet, I submitted two bids um, to, to do this work. The highest bid was from Charles Smith out of Sumter, South Carolina for $74,548. Uh, 
Uh, the lowest bid was from Walter Demolition and Renovations out of Florence for $39,360. This building we also paid a company four grand, give or take, to do an asbestos study back during the spring. And both of these companies got a copy of that so they could base their quote and they have to follow what guidelines are for that hazmat material. Is there a license or a bond? Yeah, they have to yeah, yeah, they have to do that. Yes, sir. And they have to be certified through the state. You need a motion to accept the low bid? Yes, sir. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion got second. All in favor? Aye. I'm indicating aye. All opposed? Okay. How quick will this start to happen? Uh, we'll call the Walford demolition tomorrow and hopefully they'll get it scheduled. Um, we met with him back in December uh, to get some information. And so he's. Well, that was good news on that deal. It absolutely was. I mean, we've been searching and searching, trying to find other people to be it. And so will the land be ours? No. Land will be ours. If, they, if the folks do not um, reimburse us who own the land, right. I mean, it'll be turned over to the tax collections and we'll put a lien on the property, but we will not own the property. Okay. Yeah, what about, uh, can you get the same bids on that? We haven't got anything on that one yet, but we've talked about it on those. And, and I've talked with the owner on that particular one, and he's got a study that was done there, you know, and trying to get him to get that one taken care of himself. Yeah, that 20 years. Yeah. That's but if it doesn't come through, that's something that we can, once again, we'll go out and bid it out and see what the cost will be. All right. Uh, council member report. Council member. Oh, wait, wait, wait a second. Now. Wait. For, oh, the police vehicles? Yeah, you need to table that motion. I mean, table that. I make the motion we table it to the next meeting. All right, got a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Now, we get some different reports, Mr. Hill. Um, I just want to go back and I looked in the minutes and I wanted to make sure if this can be done or can't be done on the facade page. Let's say a business already applies and gets half the money and there's still money on the table. Can that business come and get some more of the money? If, if at, and, and we don't have a, a drop date, but let's just say right now, we've got eight committed that's been awarded, mm -hmm. all 24,000, 3,000 each is what we say. Um, and let's just say everybody has completed their projects in a timely manner, and there's, whether it's $500 or $5,000, we get it back to see if anybody wants to, to reach out to those ones. What are we doing about the, the upkeep grants? The first one we're doing. What, what's, what's being done with the guys taking care of the projects? They got our money. Right now, nothing's been done on either one of them. So how do we hold their feet to the fire and get this done? I don't know. I don't have an answer to that. So what about the last two? Are they starting? One of them has completed. Uh, Dr. Hooker, from my understanding, we hadn't gotten the paperwork that what he applied for his roofing and all. That's been doing. Um, that one that Judge McIntyre applied, I don't know if she started, but they have until June, January, end of this month, to pull permits. Because they had 60 or 90 days from the time they were awarded. Permit. So they got a time frame, but the first two we, we, we gave out don't have a time frame. Well, no, they had a time frame to do what they said they were going to do. We didn't say the upfit grant was going to pay for completion of their, their project. Mm -hmm. They just said it would do certain things for their project. Uh, demolition and things of that nature. One of them got completely I guess up to fifteen thousand. The other one, I think he got maybe seven or eight thousand. He didn't have enough in there. But the thing I got a problem with is they got our money. They do, and nothing's being done. Right. Yeah. So, so we don't have anything in place that says 
you owe us money back. I understand that. Yeah. I understand that. And whether we should do condemned buildings, maybe not. You know, in the beginning, I think we all thought that was the way to get these condemned buildings done. But it doesn't have to work. That's all we got? Man, on that, uh, Fred, David, have you had any reports of the uh, folks Fred Payton and uh, signed down there on uh, Martin Luther King? About five or six of them signed Fred Payton. Yeah, I turned that in to the state last week to let them know. And I think an incident report was also done because they hit one of the businesses in that area, too. What's been on that, on that uh, project down there? Do we have all those? I'm sorry? The governors, the concrete areas here down there, all the, is that everybody trying to pay for that? Everything's in the works to be done there. But I mean, next thing to be doing is design work. I mean, they take the engineers' time to design what needs to be done and get permits that they have to get. Now, you're probably talking six to nine months before you see anything really happen. We need to do that. We need to do that. Folks know that they have to do that. We have to get the concrete and everything to do that. Well, it's actually Martin Luther King. Still has empty buildings downtown. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, let me uh, mention I, I have made my announcement that I'm not going to seek a fifth term. Um, I've been thinking about that for some time. Glenn knows it. I've been putting hints out there for yeah, about a third term. Um, you know, this last quarter was, um, you know, right behind that hurricane. The fourth quarter in my business was tough. Really, really tough. Um, then we did that show that I brought in, raising all the money on the, uh, the Scrooge production, uh, which well, turned out well. That was a good thing for, for us here. And it, 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 that's also helped the theater uh, tremendously. Uh, and then the ongoing stuff. And, you know, but Friday night we had a function, and this is where I want to come from. You know, I, my youngest son, my oldest son, High school went by, <coughs> and, I, and um, you can be as busy as you want to be as the mayor. You can you can sit back and not do much and not spend much time, and that's never the way I do it. Uh, Glenn has been fantastic with me. I hope that I've been a help to Glenn, um, and to, for him to bounce things off me. Uh, that was my intention, but. You know, I miss my son's game Friday night. I'm missing my son's game tonight. I missed three in the last three weeks for various things, and I'm gonna look back on that. And, um, and that's that's the primary reason. I've kind of felt like uh, some people have come to me and you can't do it, you can't do it. You're gonna leave right leave right in the middle of this time uh, while you're quitting on us. But that's not that's not the case. I hope to stay involved. Um, and I, I think the next mayor, whoever that, that'll be, it's not going to be a change. It would have to make a wholesale change on council for things to, to, to change. People are just, I think, they're a little worried because the city has operated so well all these years by, by this council, the, uh, the staff, uh, all the way from the, the legal to the personnel, the codes, and those fellows sitting in the back row and the ones that aren't here tonight. Um, and the employees themselves, it's like I stated, they wouldn't have it any other way, nor the public. Because um, they don't see, and I don't know the situation at the county, who's right or wrong, or what's going on there, but when you have uh, the newspaper a chaos, they don't have the chaos here. And um, they don't want to have it here. And it's not been here because of the people working here and the people leaving the city. Um, and that'll continue because it's, you know, it's just, uh, it's just a well-oiled machine. We got our challenges, we got our problems, um, and always we, being a municipality, but it's as good a shape 
right now going forward that you'll ever have. I hope to stay involved. I want to stay involved as a volunteer uh, in any way I can do it. Uh, but I'll have more to say about it. I want to thank everybody uh, for all they've done to me and my family who gave me the opportunity to serve. It's been a pleasure uh, to do that. And I hope to continue to do it. That's the, the greatest place to live. The only thing I regretted, I have never used my office to uh, thank God for what He's done in my life. Um, you know, brought me from a job in Winsboro, you know, praying to come back to Dillon because I didn't want to run away from Dillon. I wanted to run back to Dillon. And I was there as a, in quality control when Mac Truck was there. And he did answer the prayer, but it took two years. And brought me back to Dillon in a capacity that I never could imagine uh, of how he did it. But I want to say tonight, thank you to all uh, on it. we got three more months, and I think we're going to do some things in these three months with the parks and some other areas that, that short term that, that I think we can do. But it's, it's been an honor, and I want to thank every one of you. Well, before, that. before that, I mean, you, you got to have a photograph. Oh, well, that's, 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 I don't want to wait like I did the That's not the one you do at the post office. <laughs> <laughs> there is the drawback to the, being the mayor. If you don't like pictures, you better not do it. If you don't like being in the public, you better not do it. Or, But that is one thing I've never asked for. And that's that's been the biggest issue with me. Is that you'll, you'll see my Facebook page, you'll never see a selfie with me. Or a, I'll never. We need one on the wall. <laughs> Shout out to you. We'll get it. We'll get it. But it took anyway, Judge McIntyre to get us one about a year and a half after Well, I'll that. try to find one that'll work. I mean, uh, it'll be a hard job, but we'll find one. Um, really don't have, um, really don't have anything for thank Todd for the 16 years. Um, we, uh, you know, just got a lot done under, you know, your mayorship. I reckon that's what it's called. And, um, you know, um, uh, I've been on council, I don't know, 24, 25 years. And I can, I can remember when we came on council, I was thinking about this the other day, you know, we had equipment that we got from the salvage place in Columbia, uh, and we, you know, we tinkered with it a little bit, got it running, and you know, we go to a project, and we work two hours, and then the rest of the day we just sit and look at the broke equipment. And, you know, in the past 16 years, you know, we're, we're buying new equipment. And, uh, uh, I think that when you have new equipment, you get things done. And your, your employees enjoy working for you. And, um,
since I was probably uh, nine, ten years old, and uh, thank the Lord to him and his family, and he's going to be so shortly missed. I uh, appreciate it. Oh, I'd just like to congratulate you on making your decision on you know, what you want to do for yourself. And um, it has been nice working with you. And I thank my husband and your family mm -hmm. real well. And he you enjoy it, your brother and, and your father. And um, the only thing I have for tonight is that I noticed that we were talking about people moving back to the city and the look of the city. I noticed that I'm noticing a lot of trash side the roads now. And, like a stop sign, they just stop it like and clean the cars out. And it's been more, quite a lot, lot really, and it just doesn't look good. And I wish that, I don't know who, who would pick it up or... We try to get what we can, and the Sheriff's Department has a, a little control that does a lot for us in the city as well. If, if you can, whenever you see an area like that, just let us know, and we'll try to get somebody over there as quickly as possible. Are we happy with the way they pay? 301. Mm -hmm. Good gracious, it is awful. I mean, I mean, we have anything to say to DOT about that. Yeah, I was like, uh, Chief Lane, you said you hadn't seen those pictures of the spray paint signs? Yeah, ma'am. And I, I have pictures of it, and I'd like to ask you some questions about it okay. about after the meeting. Yes, ma'am. Uh, well, we got a great job on the fire. Saturday night. Well, just to follow up about paving, Bert and I sat in a meeting. Was it last week, Bert? With the C funds? Remember, we requested money through the C funds to do the paving there on Main, where we took out the median. That's in the works. Um, met with the contractor. Just make sure it isn't the same one. Well, it's yeah, actually it the same one because they got to come back to do some stuff, and that's what when you mentioned that. They've got to come back and do some things, and um, they will do that, which C funds will pay us or give us the, the amount of money. We, in turn, turn around and pay the uh, contractor. So that would be sometime spring, early summer. But while y'all talking about DOT, you know, there's been a push on this blitz on potholes. Yeah, I saw state. that. What's the deal with that? Uh, I talked with the local resident maintenance uh, engineer today about that briefly. And Let us know we're here. Yeah, he, he doesn't. Yeah, I heard Domino's is good. Yeah, Domino's is good. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right, Will, there's nothing else. I'll make a motion to vote. Thank you all.